Let's take a migration journey, shall we, as I set up for June. I am moving from this A5 Bullet Journal Edition 2 into the B5 Passion Planner Journal. And I use this opportunity every month to get in touch with the Bullet Journal method in its pure spirit, and that is to be centered in reflection and growth in intention. A lot of times people will think that the bullet journal system is about the art and the ways you draw out all your spreads. And I'm here to remind you, as I usually do, that the bullet journal system is about your approach and its practice. And the form that it takes is almost irrelevant. Um, And that it can be as simple as you want it to be. And it has no need to be your art project. No need. Optional. I do this, I have to tell you, because it is something that brings me joy. And I just keep it kind of simple. I'm kind of in the middle when it comes to pretty and functional. But I take that time, as you saw me earlier, flip through my last month and take stock. What happened? (laughs) What did I feel like at the end of this month? What stood out as the general theme of how I was feeling? And as I look back, I have to admit, the stickers and everything look very, very cute. I, for the most part, heavily used it every single day and I did a lot of stuff. And when I look back, I have to see and be honest with myself about what those tasks were. And it was a season of intensity. And I was moving from my apartment to my roommate's new house. And yes, I moved again. It's been terrible. (laughs) And I'm also preparing our office for a departmental move to a new building. And so there's a lot of displacement and instability happening there, right? Where on top of the end of the semester, hectic energy of doing grades and wrapping it up and celebrating graduation, there's just a lot that was happening. I managed to sneak in a little vacation there, which was great. But here we are hitting the ground running again, right? And when I look back, I see that a lot of the tasks that I had gotten done were for other people. It was for different roles and jobs that I had and not always doing stuff that was for the nourishment of myself in the longer term. I have to believe that it's a season. As Kendra Adachi says from The Lazy Genius, we have to live in the season, And I'm not going to give myself too much of a hard time for being full and falling off that that self-care wagon because that happens sometimes. And the important part is that I see it and I'm going to uh, do some things to adjust that because that's what I want for myself. I found that because it was so busy, the first things to go are the tasks that take care of myself. So I ended up spending a lot more money than I normally would on eating out because it got so hectic Um, and I needed to save on the time. And it kind of becomes its own cycle, as we all know. But what I saw of myself was just like this shell of who I am normally. And um, there are still moments of brightness and vibrancy and stuff like that. Um, But I could see myself going down this path that I had gone down before back in like the fall of 2017, where it gets really easy for me to get so wrapped up in tasks, so wrapped up in performing and getting these things accomplished that I don't notice that I am an increasingly dark cloud to be around. Now, I don't think other people would agree with that assessment, but that is where I'm afraid it would lead to if I don't self-correct. And there are so many things pulling at us that for me, it just became like a lazy way of making conversation that when someone would ask me how I was, I would just be like, oh, God, yeah, blah, 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 I'm so tired, so stressed. And I'm not saying I'm going to ignore that, but I was realizing that I was just leaning on that a little too much in terms of my response and the energy that I was putting out. So again, not to ignore how I feel, but to recognize that I was not being very mindful in the kind of energy that I was producing. There are always some people in my life that I see and connect with that remind me what kind of energy we can give. So it inspires me to lean more into hope, to lean more into possibility rather than languishing in things that we all know are challenging or that 
I just got sick of myself, okay? <laughs> so that's one thing that I noticed about that time. And I know that it's going to settle down just a little bit here in the next month. And I'm really excited about getting back into some kind of new routine because like you would expect, I kind of fell off any kind of workout wagon that I had to start off with. And between that and my my hip injury, I think I was afraid of in flaring my injury. So I was just kind of avoiding working out, which does not help me at all. So now that we're into June, I'm going to take a page out of Dan from the Pacific Notations book and try to pre-plan some workouts. So being able to remove the energy that it takes to make a decision and deciding once what those things are going to be. I started doing that with meal planning, something else that I really loathe it doing, but I started doing the meal matrix, which meant that I sat down and planned stuff out for the month. And that's where I can channel my energy into being very intentional in that time. And I used some recipes from Budget Bites, knowing that I want to eat a little bit more vegetarian and looked for recipes that kind of reflected that helped me to set myself up on the right foot for the upcoming month. My other hope is that now that I have more space and I don't need to go to the bathroom to like do my physical therapy exercises, that I have space to also do my art. If you follow me on Instagram, even if you don't, you should, at Pretty Prince and Paper, I love alcohol inks. And that was my jam for a while until I decided that I needed a real office chair in my room. And uh, that meant that I didn't have enough space to really spread out and do those pieces. And it's been months since I've really gotten to do some art for myself. I've done it for other people, for commissions, but not for my own flow and creativity. So I'm really excited this month to lean back into that, pull that out again, and dive in Since so much of my job has been kind of on the computer using my brain in really abstract ways, it is so nice to be able to engage in something that uses my hands. And I think that's why I love the weekly setup ritual that I have going on with my bullet journal because I actually use my hands and get out of my head. And I think that's also why I chose to do liquid watercolor in this spread because instead of laying down stickers, I am actually engaging with my artistic muscle, using some art supplies and just laying down some inks onto paper, which, and honestly, I'm always surprised at how well this paper takes the watercolor, but that's why we're here. Um, The paper buckles just a little bit as you would expect, but it handles it pretty well. I'm just using like a little bit of water. You don't want to soak it because that will absolutely soak through the page. So that's why you see me kind of passing over the ink a couple times just to pick up the excess water. In case you were wondering, this spread is going to be the monthly spread where on the left hand side, I'm going to leave room for a master to do list so that at any point, if something occurs to me randomly, um, I can have a place to put it is right here on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, that's where I'm going to be putting my projects and priorities on the right. That way I can just sit down and look at the things that I really care about wanting to focus on this month. And honestly, again, it's like the the process of sitting back and deciding what do I want more of in my life or what are the things that I need to decide once right now um, ahead of time to focus on for the rest of the next couple weeks. Again, it doesn't have to be anything super fancy. I'm not drawing cartoons or laying down layers of brown paper and washi tape. I just need a box, some headers so that I know where things are going, and that's about it. So again, you can lay down as much as you want or just do something very, very simple. The whole point of this is that it allows you to put stuff out of your mind onto paper and you have one place to reference it. 
Hard to believe, but I have been doing this for seven years and that blows my mind. But if there's anything that I've learned from creating a system that is unique and useful and yours, it is that you learn how to lean into your own strengths and your personal quirks of your brain. And in a previous video, I talked a lot about like different strengths and your Enneagram and what your Myers-Briggs type might mean for your planning. Something that I briefly talked about was your top five strengths. And this is a really common like um, test that I, I've done a couple times, but it's from Gallup and it's called the Strengths Finder. And you get a list of 34 strengths and you have a top five. And these are the skills or the dispositions that you uniquely have and you should lean into in order to kind of like live into your own potential. And some of my top five are things like a ranger which means that it's really easy for me to maneuver, rearrange things. What you are exactly good at arranging totally depends on the other strengths in your top five. But for me, it looks like being able to quickly adapt my schedule around and move things pretty easily as well as in physical spaces. So what this looks like is I need a lot of flexibility in my plans. I don't like having things locked in too much because I'm very open to it changing so that I can make the most out of my time or my mood that day. That leans into another one of my top five strengths, which is maximizer, meaning that I like to make things more efficient, take things from good to great. I thrive in trying to come up with an errand list that hits a bunch of different spots in a sensical order and really maximize the kinds of things that I can do in that time. What a thrill, I am telling you. That's probably also why I love using the Google Calendar as my events list because I love being able to move it around. I don't have to remove a bunch of stickers all the time and being able to maximize like a time blocking schedule for errands. Okay, so my camera totally blitzed and um, here are the pages that I created so far. I kept all the logs from last month and I just zoomed in here on the different things that I'm tracking in my wellness. I borrowed this from the star days method from Brian Hazard and being able to just track four habits that make sense to me. And you can see that I'm trying to get to bed earlier. I'm trying to focus on habits that are, you know, kind of at the root of my well-being now that it's going to be settling out here in June. So you'll see that I have on there like push-ups because I want to work my way into a more consistent workout routine. And for some reason, push-ups are an easy way for me to do that. And then the more that I build on that momentum, I'm hoping that that triggers some other wellness movement kinds of activities. I also want to get better at doing a shutdown routine at the end of the workday. I noticed as with many of us, when I was working at home, it just bled into everywhere. I have three jobs. And so it's hard to separate myself from work and do other things for joy. So having a shutdown routine of some sort would be really helpful for that. Things like writing down my to-do list for the next day or um, turning off my computer completely. I don't know if that one's really going to happen. But things like that. And then I want to prioritize things like learning and creating. To be fair, I do listen to a lot of podcasts and YouTube videos, but I want to prioritize things like creating because as you heard, I had a hard time um, spending any time doing art or doing anything that was more creative and not just consuming on TikTok and Instagram. So those are my priorities for the next month. When you look at your own life, what are the things that that you are wanting to improve upon or take more time for that you're tracking. Um, as you know, I don't like to track a ton of habits, but just a couple of the really meaningful ones that can be stacked into other more meaningful patterns and habits. Let me know in the comments what it is that you're tracking in your habit tracker this month, if anything at all. So we're back with the watercolors again in this weekly. I'm pairing both the weekly and the journal. Um, I'm not going whole hog in the journal yet, um, maybe because I feel bad for kind of wasting a couple weeks in the passion planner, but I'm going to use both for now. And then I'm sure once I start working more at the office, I'll consider putting them all together into one 
journal, but I'm using the watercolor. It's the same paper as the journal, and I've done this before in the past. You can see some of my setup videos, but using just a little bit of watercolor adds that just touch of beautiful gradient that I love the look of in this planner. I am, I only have like five or six different actual colors here, but you can see that I'm mixing them together right on the brush before adding them on there to extend to a nice eight color mix across the whole page. So as you prepare your next month, find that sweet spot between that self-acceptance of living in your season and leaning into whatever you have to to take care of yourself and the pushing yourself to do differently. I know that is a hard line for me to find as I give myself a hard time, I should on myself all the time, and trying to balance that is a juggling act. So I wish you all the best in that, knowing when to lean back, knowing when to lean in for yourself. Maybe you change one little thing, maybe you overhaul a couple different things, whatever you decide, you have to trust. And I think that's been such a beautiful thing on my own planner journey is um, building up my trust in myself, in my intuition, and what I need. And my usual message, finding that system that works just for you is going to be something unique. It's not going to be what's trending all the time. And taking the time to step out of yourself and being honest about how this last month has gone is the key to all of our growth. It is the key to the bullet journal system. And it's an opportunity for us to um, change or self-correct into whatever the hell we want. All right. So this is my simple setup. I hope that you enjoyed kind of seeing the process of throwing this together. I would love to answer any questions below, or I would honestly love to hear how you're really doing. How has this season been for you? What is going on? I would love to hear you in the comments underneath. If you haven't seen some of my other setup videos, you can see more of that balance between the bullet journal method and kind of doing an artsy, uh, pretty system. And if you haven't seen the passion journal before, you can check that review out on my channel and I will keep you posted as to how this is B5 experiment is going. This is the first time I've really changed the size of my bullet journal everyday carry. So we'll see how this goes. Maybe it'll just be an expanse and I'll just be like Julie Andrews running around in a field in the sound of music. Who knows? But if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it and I will see you in my next video. Bye!